The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Welcome to the Cashman Mind, Body, Spirit Show. I think you're going to find this very interesting today uh, because most of us have children or at least have grandchildren. We can influence uh, children. So the name of the show is Feeding Your Children. You know, it's really interesting. You say, well, I'll decide when they're one or two years old. No, actually. When the sperm and the egg meet and, and at conception, yes, immediately uh, the genetic script of the child within you is being written. Yes, our DNA determ determines our gene expression okay, through RNA, but that can be influenced by what the mother or father did before conception what their habits are, uh, help write the genetic script of the infant. But when a child is born, only 5% of their genetic script has been written. Yes, only 5%. 95% of what their future is will be determined uh, by uh, what uh, is going on in that house, what the mother is eating, whether she's smoking or an alcohol. At three months, the child can hear the first organ to develop uh, the ears. So if, if there is music in the house, uh, maybe uh, the child be a singer or a musician. Uh, if they're constantly fighting uh, in the house, uh, the child can hear that and, and their genetic script is being written. They can, when they're born, they can be uh, nervous or depressed or anxious, or if the, the mother has been using narcotics, they can be addicted to narcotics. If she smokes, they can be addicted to nicotine, yes. So it's uh, uh, what uh, the parents do before and after is uh, very important. Uh, and uh, what, when a baby is, born, uh, whether you use breast milk or not, is important. A lot of people, uh, ladies have C-sections now, but when they have C-sections, the child does not go through the vagina, and in the vagina, normally the faces get covered with uh, bacteria that form their gut. Uh, uh, there's about 15 trillion lively bacteria living in your gut today, and, and they are not fully grown till the, the child is four years old. So if you're having a C-section, the child's gut is, is not properly developed, and they can have nutrition issues. Absolutely true. I think most people get a C-section. They're not told about that beforehand. But, so the genetic script of the infant is very, very important. Uh, and uh, then uh, uh, after we're born, uh, then, uh, interesting enough, end of our chromosomes, our 48 chromosomes, they've now discovered our, what, what is called telomeres. A, they have tails on them um, that we can affect by what we do. Uh, they're called telomeres, and the field of science now is called epi upon genetics. So these uh, don't change your DNA. DNA or RNA, but they influence your DNA and RNA. So th through 
uh, what you are eating, uh, what you are hearing, uh, whether you exercise or not, will affect your telomeres. And they have even something called the Hayflick effect, Hayflick effect, that the telomeres shorten over the years. And some people think when uh, the, there's no more telomere left, uh, that's the last day that you live. Uh, but that's an emerging uh, science. So uh, remember I said mother's milk is the best. Why is the mother's milk the best? Because it has a lot of omega-3 fats in it. And the child with the largest brain of omega-3 fats uh, is uh, the child that has received mother's milk. You know, in this country, maybe 30% for six months, mm -hmm. it's that, that poor. Uh, other countries, it's a lot longer. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, I play tennis uh, in other countries with the American Medical Association uh, sports thing that went all the countries. So I went to Sweden and, and I uh, play tennis there with a gentleman and, and his wife. He hasn't worked in a year. He hasn't worked in a year and is fully paid. Those countries realize that raising a child is so important that they, they want, first they gave those privileges to the mother. One year, she didn't have to work. I think now she doesn't have to work for two years to take care of the child. They think, uh, would, would you feed them, would the activities with them, uh, whether you love them and hug them all day, they have realized how important raising a child is. And after reviewing this about nutrition and, and, and children, uh, that's even more important. We generally don't teach children uh, good nutritional habits. I mean, look around, look around, look around. We have a very unhealthy looking society that's developing diabetes and 50 chronic diseases associated with it. Uh, uh, so uh, mother's milk is important. In Sweden, they've realized that, and they give their parents, I think it's up to two years. Mother, father don't have to work. They t have to take care of the child, and they do. I met them. Isn't it something? Yeah, you could probably Google it and find out more about it. I don't think we'll ever see that, who could afford that, but, but, but they consider it so important and they have healthier kids, they spend less money on health care. They think teaching a child uh, to eat properly is as important as teaching them other things. I think that, that, that's a, a big one. So uh, there's a book that I read called Baby Led Weaning. How do you wean people from uh, mother's milk or, or, or uh, drinking uh, uh, bottled milk? Uh, and uh, uh, this book describes it, it very well. Baby led weaning, Google it, and the book will, will uh, uh, pop out. And uh, uh, the, uh, the, the baby is looking for, to transition from bottle breastfeeding and bottle feeding. In America, we use uh, purees a lot, a little spoon, because there's very little sugar in, in, in parade, so that, that's not a bad thing. And uh, so, um, what are signs that indicate that your child is ready for some solid food, say after 12 months, before that time we've been either uh, breastfeeding, bottle feeding, using some uh, uh, parades, for example, uh, that the baby is sitting uh, upright more, okay? That would be one thing. That it holds the head and neck uh, while it's up, while it's still seated. But seated uh, would indicate maybe they're ready to go on with a different way of feeding. Uh, takes an interest in food uh, that they're eating, that they're looking at it. Uh, uh, example, um, that he's grabbing for larger he or she objects and brings them to the mouth. Uh, indicates you might transition, and uh, the, uh, that the tongue throat reflex uh, uh, disappears. That kind of clues uh, that you are ready 
uh, to move on. But you must take an interest uh, in your baby, baby's feeding habits. It's very important, otherwise the child may have a, a disordered uh, feeding, and that can be real troublesome. Uh, so what are signs that they're not ready? <laughs> okay, and uh, 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 when they uh, make a, smapping, a, a smacking sound with their lips a lot, they're not, they're not ready to move on. Uh, that he no longer falls asleep right after drinking uh, breast milk uh, or formula. Uh, they, they have breast milk and boom. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I've been reading that they have now found that in, in breast milk, there's a morphone, a very tiny amount of morphine-like substance that they, after they breastfeed, boom, it's not because they're tired. There's a chemical in there, a morphone related to morphine. I heard a guy, uh, uh, a scientist described that who, who discovered that. Uh, and uh, so another sign that a child is ready to go on, that if he can grab things, hold things in his palm, that, that's a sign. Another one is that they have a pencil movement, a thumb and the index finger, that they're able to hold some things is a sign that they're ready uh, to move on. And uh, uh, so breast milk formula uh, and some finger foods, you know, foods that are cut like the size of fingers that they can uh, bite on. It's a balancing act. Um, and, uh, uh, and your baby's palate needs to uh, be getting used to variety that affects their future. So offer them at the beginning, a variety of different kinds of, of food, uh, but mainly health, non-processed foods, okay, whole grain, bean type products, uh, et cetera. Uh, another way to transition the baby is to seat them at the table with you, uh, sitting up in a high, in, in a high chair, uh, and uh, that will increase the chances that they like nutrient-dense food for the vitamins uh, and minerals, which helps them uh, uh, grow. It decreases the chance of being overweight, okay? Uh, and it decreases the chances of a disordered eating. Uh, some ki kids have disordered um, uh, eating, they're so fussy. Uh, they develop uh, attention deficit disorder, or some get very obese or too thin. So uh, disorders like that exist. And uh, uh, it decreases uh, the chances of there being a drug addict in the future, okay? And uh, it decreases the chances of behavior problems. You bring it to the table and, and you're teaching them uh, things. And uh, so 10 tips for six, six uh, successful uh, baby led weaning, okay? Weaning from uh, milk and uh, keep meal time uh, positive. Uh, make, make it a, a, a positive and, and a hug them, kiss them, a nice tone to the voices of the people at the table. Uh, and this is a good habit, incidentally, to bring kids to the table even as they're growing up as I was getting busy as a neurosurgeon, I used to at least have the evening meal. Everybody sitting around, I, I would listen uh, to what's going on. I'd go around the table each child's life that day uh, and try to answer questions gently. As I got busy and busy and busy, I couldn't do that anymore because I came home at nine or 10 at night. That's not good, that's not good. If there's one thing you can do in the life of your children, eat with them, maybe even lunch, uh, if they're not in school, lunch and, and dinner, but just dinner. It's even better uh, when dad comes home that him and mom cook and the kids watch the cooking. Yeah, uh, Dr. Mark Hyman has written many books on nutrition. You may have read some of them. The whole family waits till he gets home. Fortunately, he was able to get home, you know, six or seven. He, he would bring them all there, teach them how to cook. Uh, they would then share the evening meals so they knew what they were cooking, what they were sharing, a wonderful habit. I encourage you uh, to develop that. Uh, so wash your baby's hands so they get used to doing it all their life. They don't eat till they wash your hands. Uh, 
uh, I must say my wife is OCD about it, and <laughs> maybe that's why I haven't had the virus, because I, she constantly spraying, uh, you know, wash your hands before you eat. <laughs> A wonderful habit, have your baby do it, okay? Uh, and seat your baby safely, okay? Strap them in properly so you can't fall out of the chair. And uh, the, uh, uh, and give them appropriate portions. You won't give food like that uh, in the beginning, especially finger-sized portions, small pieces, okay? So always uh, supervise the infant mealtime. Have, somebody's got to have their eye on the child at all times. So they're not hanging out of, the, out of the chair like that. And some kids have fallen down and even died that. So keep an eye on them, strap them in. And uh, so uh, eat together as often as you can, which I already have m mentioned to you, uh, and offer your baby some water. Now and then give them some water to drink and, uh, uh, and check for a chipmunk cheek. So they're grown like that, obviously. They're not swallowing the food, so uh, uh, check for that. Uh, and, uh, and make accommodations for other things, you know, that might come up, clean them up. So. Uh, and, and, and introduce them to different foods, so embrace the mess. It's just going to be messy. Things are going to fall down. Yeah, uh, we all laugh about it. Don't get obsessed about it. So, but introduce them to different textures, different smells, different colors, different flavors, all types of foods, so they get used to it. Uh, uh, and now if you take uh, the baby outside the home, uh, you, you might need to take some things with you because if you go in somebody else's house, they may not have food that your baby is used to. Things that work as cut up banana pieces, avocado slices, pieces of a pancake, berries, things that you can get them because while you're taking them, they may not, may not have anything and your baby has to eat. Okay, uh, And uh, in restaurants, uh, too, uh, uh, you can have them in your pocket in a plastic uh, uh, bag, uh, so maybe some veggies or some pasta, uh, some slices, some husband, always small pieces that they won't choke on, but that may be necessary. And uh, now, what are signs that a child may be choking on the, on the food? I mean, that can happen. A child can die choking, choking to death, okay? And uh, so spot the difference between gagging and choking. Okay, uh, and if they're coughing and crying, uh, they're just gagging. You don't have to call 911, they're, they're not uh, choking. But if their skin is blue, call 911. They may be choking to death. Uh, things you can do is, is put them on your lap, uh, face, uh, face down, most of the time, uh, the food that's choking them to death will be spat out or fall out. Occasionally to pat them on the back, but most of the time all you got to do is uh, put them on, on your lap up, upside down and uh, uh, face down. Uh, so, uh, so build a balanced baby meal that you know every day that you can predict what's going to happen. And, uh, and uh, like for breakfast, uh, starting, say, at age two, uh, you should be able to advance uh, the way of eating. Uh, sliced up hard-boiled egg, mango slices, uh, and, and make them finger size. His fingers, not yours, his finger size. And uh, so orange slices, maybe some yogurt, try it with a teaspoonful. Uh, lunch, uh, some hummus, uh, some strawberries, uh, uh, green beans. The enemy really is sugar. If you can choose in the beginning not to get addicted uh, to sugar, they love sugar. Nature builds on us their love for sugar. That's what kept people alive. Uh, we c c used to not be able to eat sugar year round because we didn't have processed sugar around. All we had is the plants and they, and they were seasonal. Okay, but now we have them all year round. Uh, so, um, and uh, sweet potato fingers, to, uh, 
uh, chicken pea pasta, button, uh, so butter, toast fingers. These are all little things you, you can give. Sugar is the booger, okay? And kids are growing, so we can't really limit their protein to 20% like I do essentially in, in adults when I'm teach, teaching them uh, a, a way of eating. But kids are growing, so they need a balance of protein and good fats. And we'll teach you what good fats are. Uh, and let me now kind of make this a little more interesting for you. Uh, in New York City, where I grew up, two blocks, two blocks from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I mean, and I thought I was poor. I mean, that was the center of the world, okay? <laughs> and Robert C. Atkins, MD, in New York City, you may have heard of him, the Atkins uh, diet. Uh, uh, and. Uh, he had a huge clinic. He saw people from all over the world. He became extremely famous. Movie actresses and people came from all over the world to see Dr. Robert C. Atkins. And we have to uh, applaud him. And he was down on sugar. What he was uh, uh, teaching really uh, was uh, good fats, uh, uh, protein, maybe a little more protein than we would have said, but his people became very healthy, uh, healthy very quickly. For him worked um, a Fred Pescatore. That's whose book you see uh, right here. Uh, Fred was going to go to California. Uh, he had been medical school, and he wanted to help people. He, he, what we have today in the United States is sick care. Here's your pill, here's your prescription, or let me operate. Uh, how often does your doctor say, let me prevent your disease and get rid of it? I, I'm passionate about getting rid of type 2 diabetes, which I can do, and I've done many times. In four to six weeks, it's gone. It's many other books. Mark Hyman's books is full of that, and many other doctors. So I'm, it's not, it's not just me. It's, that is 50 diseases at least associated with it. You see why I want to prevent it, get rid of it. I'm a doctor for Pete's sake. And I don't want to allow these diseases. You can get rid of most of them very quickly, especially type 2 diabetes. So that's uh, what he did. So Fred Pescatore wanted to help people like that. And he joined Dr. Atkins who worked for him for five years. Uh, and he learned a lot about nutrition, and, and he, he has a foreword in this book. And thanks, uh, uh, matter of fact, uh, Robert C. Atkins wrote a foreword in there also. A great book uh, to read. That doesn't mean I agree with everything in the book, but I agree with 90% of things. And, and, uh, uh, and it's largely about children here. They were treating adults uh, and children. But they were treating so many uh, unhealthy, uh, overweight, uh, uh, diabetic, some of normal weight are still diabetic, uh, people from all the world. Uh, you know, Pe Fred Pescatore uh, and Atkins decided, you know, it's the, it starts when they're children. This is what I'm trying to teach you today. Uh, so, but he himself, it's interesting, uh, was a, a diabetic in high, in high school. Mm -hmm. He came from an Italian family, uh, and uh, they had bread and pasta, and they were all way overweight. Uh, and let's face it, they all had diabetes, even as children, and so uh, did, he, did he. But he decided to do something about it, and what he did, <laughs> I don't recommend this to anybody, uh, but people can survive it. He fasted for 40 days, like it said in the Bible, uh, just like Jesus did, okay? That's what he did. And he lost 65 pounds. Uh, and and uh, he then realized uh, uh, that fasting worked, except what I teach, uh, and, and he agrees with too, is like 16-8 time regulated eating. You don't eat for 16 hours, which I do every day. It's not very hard. And then eat in an eight-hour period. 
you'll be very healthy if you do that. I weighed myself this morning, 133 pounds. That seems impossible. And uh, it, it isn't because I do time-regulated uh, eating, and then I watch what eat a little bit, but which, uh, that's not really totally critical. Uh, I, I found people of a normal weight, uh, if they eat time or regular eating, because your body in the 16 hours uh, goes, undergoes autophagia, it r gets rid of bad cells, repairs good cells, uh, and then after about 8, 10 hours, you go into ketone metabolism, uh, uh, which really, it, ketone is a molecule made by the liver out of fat. Uh, so after about eight hours, you go into ketone, and the body is metabolized. In fact, you need uh, energy, and you get skinny. That's what's happened to me, obviously, because I live in New York City. My dad had a deli. We eat lousy meat. We eat milk products, and I don't, and, and Dr. Pescatore doesn't either. Uh, I don't recommend drinking animal milk. And, 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 why, and why is that? Because uh, animal milk, when, it, when a cow is born, it's injected by a hormone, so it'll grow faster, so it, it makes more milk, 10 times more milk. And they put it in a cage, they put in pesticides and herbicides, and, and, and then we give our, tell our kids to drink milk. It's ridiculous. He t does not recommend uh, 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 animal milk. He will, he will uh, recommend uh, like almond milk and uh, uh, for, for example, uh, uh, and it's a book written by Joe Keon Whitewash is the name of it. If you read that, you wouldn't drink milk again. I read that, I've read it probably five times now for my TV shows, uh, and, and milk is not a health food. Mm -hmm. Because industry fools you totally. Uh, you go to some pediatricians today and they uh, recommend milk drinking, it's, it's totally cow's milk, totally ridiculous. A lot of people are allergic to the, uh, are even allergic to the milk, uh, uh, lactose, the milk, because they don't have the lactase enzyme to digest it. Asians don't have the lactase enzyme at all. They don't drink milk at all. So I just wanted to bring that up so we could, I want you to gather some more information. And uh, Fred Pescatore now, uh, who runs his own wellness clinic in New York, New York City. Uh, it's a picture of him in the book. Uh, he's six feet tall, normal weight, okay? Uh, and so we're getting back to children's. Uh, we'll look at things that are from his book, okay? And what he recommends uh, is that, that uh, we use a carb counter, like when I'm talking about diabetics, I like them to have a Dex, uh, Dexcom 6 to, uh, so they can have a patch there. They can just take their phone, go like that, and tell them the blood sugar after the meal. So that'd be sort of like counting uh, calories, so how many calories of, of sugar, of carbohydrates, pro protein, and fat that you ingest. That's not critical to have that, but he does recommend that. Uh, and uh, and uh, the National Health and Nutrition um, Survey found that 26% of children, adolescents, are overweight. It's higher than that. But, but that was done about five, eight years ago. Then we doubled the rate. It's doubled the rate 30 years ago. Um, uh, and now it's around at least 54%. Um, uh, in 12 to 18 year olds, yeah. Over 50%, it's probably 60% now of children aged 12 to 18 are overweight. And, and, and if they were tested for diabetes, which they don't, like you get a serum insulin, which I was pushing people, we found out a lot of them are diabetic. The trouble with that is the diseases, the 50 diseases I talk about, are developing in them and they're silent for the time being, like kidney disease. Uh, diabetes, eye problems. Uh, that in the beginning, are silent diseases, so we don't do anything about them. No one runs a test. Like the GFR, the glomerular filtration rate for kidneys, they don't run those people till you have advanced kidney disease and then you get it, oh, you need dialysis, when it could have been prevented in the first place. That's why I'm pushy about prevention. And it starts as 
children. And uh, so, uh, uh, how do you say a child is overweight if it's 130% of the ideal body weight, which, which is uh, in, in a table? And uh, uh, so, uh, like I said, over 50% of the adults are overweight, and over 30% of the kids are overweight, and if they were properly tested, we find the kids probably as higher than that. And there's just a little different ethnicity. And, and racial, you can go to certain ethnic racial schools, and you see there's a difference. Uh, and, and we, we get a hold of the schools responsible because the, 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 the lunches they provide, uh, they won't even let me walk by them to look at them. Yeah, I've tried it. I, I, I couldn't, uh, in our town, uh, walk past the, their lunches and, and look and see, are they healthy or not? And, and, um, and then if you look at the kids, you, you realize, as a matter of fact, I, the other day I was speaking to, to someone at Indiana Tech, uh, where I uh, have some, where I do some teaching on health. I was talking to the manager and he said outside his apartment house, uh, uh, there's a playground and he says he's looking down on the children. He says, you can't believe what I am looking at. And especially some uh, ethnic racial uh, groups. Uh, he was telling me about some Mexican children uh, who have a higher rate of diabetes uh, uh, than we have now in the United States. It wasn't always so. Matter of fact, they increased their sugar tax recently. At least they're trying to do something about it. Uh, but the, the reason I bring it up uh, is uh, they're not going to live as long. They, 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 if they have uh, signs of overweight or diabetes as children, they're going to die 20 years younger and maybe another 20 years before that they're disabled. Amputated legs, blindness, kidney disease, renal disease. I am trying to prevent those things. I bring it up because I'm about uh, uh, prevention. And, uh, uh, and the earlier you start in life, uh, the better it works. They recommend paying att more attention as to what we're eating at age two. Yes, yes. Dr. Kraft from Chicago, whose book I'm going to bring up next when I have my half hour diabetes show, uh, studied a glucose tolerance tests, insulin tolerance tests starting at age two. And he found significant abnormalities uh, in, child, in uh, children. And uh, so the earlier in life, the better. And uh, so, uh, and we mentioned uh, already his family uh, was eating nothing but, but uh, pasta uh, and bread, sugary products. Uh, and, uh, and they're all abnormal, but they did not see it. They did not see it. And, 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 and we're not uh, uh, blame, blaming them. Uh, it's uh, maybe in school or maybe in their culture. Uh, we need to change. And if you get some answers how to do it, let me know. I'm at the moment working with Indiana Tech on having an app uh, that people could use uh, for, for health teaching. I think that's Maybe a good idea. I hope I get it I get, get finished. And uh, so, um, and Dr. Pescatori decided he realized proper eating should be ingrained in all of us, like washing hands. A child should be taught what good food is. Kids at a very young age need to know what good food is. I think that's a wonderful idea. I mean, we're having an obesity epidemic, let's, let's face it, okay? Uh, and, 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 and Dr. Pescatori says, give me a child for seven years and, and then do what you want. He says, in seven years, he would indoctrinate it at them. It would be a, a habit. They don't change uh, if you've been doing it for, for seven years, instinct. Okay, uh, so uh, for 50 years, the government, industry, hospitals, doctors, I can go on and on, uh, told us that fat was unhealthy. So 
30, 50 years, we taught uh, that fat was not good for you, a major mistake, because they told us to eat more sugar. And what happened to the nation? We probably lead the world in being overweight. Some underweight people have, have actually fatty liver and fatty pancreas and have diabetes anyhow, okay? And uh, so uh, a lot of people now take drugs to get their blood sugar down, but the drugs have side effects. Uh, uh, let's talk about the psychology a little bit. By age 16, 40% of females desire to be thinner. 40%, 50% have dieted at least once, okay? 15% of girls age 16 are on diet pills and they have side effects. And they still don't understand what good food is. They need to be taught as to what good food is, something about exercise. So uh, train a child in the way he should go and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's from the Bible, Proverbs, from the Bible. Let me read it again. Train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it, from Proverbs. Isn't that interesting? So the older the obese child is, probably will, uh, they, they have eating problems the rest of their lives. But I, I have myself, found though from going through many different phases. Remember, I live in New York, I ate deli food and, and milk, which caused me acne. And so I've been, been through it, but I'm willing to change my mind when I see things work with me better. Uh, uh, th uh, that we must be willing to change. And the, like our doctors need to be taught in the medical school what a good diet for a child is, and they don't teach it. They teach nutrition. Four days, I beg to speak in the med school, talk about this stuff here, but, uh, uh, but the dean won't let me in because he says, I have to teach what national says. But national gets bribed by industry, uh, uh, and, and now I notice the med school is joining one of the hospital systems, and they're, they're going on, on their campus. So what do you think is gonna happen? They're gonna lock, lock here, and you think uh, this, town here is going to have good nutrition treatment for children and adults. I'll eat my hat if they do that, okay? But I'll be there pushing at them. And I'm getting somewhere because people walk up to me and say, I lost weight, my diabetes went away. I ate in front, front, outside in a restaurant maybe six weeks ago, and my wife's brother was visiting, and I couldn't believe it. He told me on the way home, he says, says Rudy, you realize 24 people came up to you and said hello when they tell you, uh, how healthy they were and things they were doing. So even with TV, radio, books, which I do, uh, public access, which I thank the library for doing, I am having an influence. But I, I like to see more. This app I'm talking about, I think that would have more effect uh, yet. So g give me a hand. <laughs> so, uh, so why in the U.S. US are so many people overweight? Two parents are working, so they can't really prepare the meals properly for the children. Um, one parent family uh, is significant. You see why in Sweden, I was telling her, um, they, they uh, pay mother and father to be at home. I think it's up to two years. Why it's so important, it affects the health of the nation. They're not a rich nation, but they are, they are rich. Uh, they don't need as many hospitals. The hospitals are smaller. They're saving money, actually. Um, uh, so, and, mo and more people are eating away from home. They're eating fast food. They're grabbing things. Uh, sugary drinks are 50% uh, of obesity. And, and I know some people that are billionaires run huge companies in this town, uh, but they're very unhealthy. You can just look at them and you see they're unhealthy because they're eating out a couple of meals a day. I could not think, well, maybe I could buy. When you talk to the waiter, you can pretty much tell them, I don't care what the menu says, most waiters will get you what you want if you work at it. Yeah, that's true. A lot of people don't know that. Um, uh, and, but if you're eating regular meals two a day out, 
there's no way you could be unhealthy. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm totally convinced of that. Uh, but but uh, so, so let's talk a little bit about different types of foods. Fruit isn't all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, I will eat fruit, give you healthy. Fruit is in it, fructose. You should be eating a vegetable instead. Yeah, fr fructose uh, goes to the liver, is turned into, into fat, and 30% is sent to the kidney and makes the kidney uh, sick. Uh, so fruit is not the health food that you think. My food pyramid has fruit and vegetables at the top, about 15% of your diet. Yeah, the rest should be protein and good fats. You need, need to find out what good fats are. Uh, so, uh, so fruit, instead of these sugary drinks I told you about that will make you heavy, uh, may not be helpful. Soda is 50% of the obesity problem, uh, uh, but uh, fruit has a lot to do with it too. If you eat fruit with a kernel in it, there's less sugar in them. I didn't say no fruit, okay? But I'm saying if you think I'm eating uh, vegetables and fruit, I'll be healthy. You may still be way overweight because there's too much fructose corn syrup in it. And fructose corn syrup doesn't turn off the appetite. So you just keep on eating. Yeah, you keep on eating. And uh, uh, it, it, it's true. Uh, to use sweets as a reward at home for your children, don't do that because they become addicted uh, to sugar. Uh, sugar goes to the nucleus of Cubans. That's quick reward. Uh, you you can you can eat, eat uh, say a, a pear. Even an apple is full of sugar. Yeah, even an apple. I wouldn't have thought that is, but that is. Uh, it, it, try some grapes. Grapes generally aren't as bad because they have a lot of fiber. But I I I, I notice that there's grapes in my refrigerator. I'll grab them. Boy, it must be dopamine secretion. I, I feel better. Uh, so, and there can be diseases can occur from eating too much sugar. Attention deficit disorder, ADHD. Uh, sugar is usually the problem. Although you, you need to see a specialist for that and decide whether it's sugar or not. But it's interesting though, in 1950 it was rare. 1960s it increased in incidence. In 1996, it was on the cover of Newsweek, ADHD. So we're becoming more aware of it, but also I think we're eating the processed sugary foods um, and that's uh, causing that. So, but again, it can be confusing. So you have to have some tests. So there are many other factors uh, are involved here. And, uh, uh, but consider all options. Let it go a year uh, because they recommend Ritalin, which has side effects, uh, but first, see if it can be corrected by proper eating, uh, see a couple of specialists, uh, a couple of professionals, so it can be lead, it can be diet, it can be environment, uh, and, uh, and let's go on what Fred does, for example, to his children that he's uh, 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 treating. The things I talked about is generally what he rec what generally recommends, but I encourage you to get his book and to read it. Um, uh, and he puts it kind of in phases, uh, starting, he's writing in this book mainly from age uh, six to 18, okay? We already spoke about uh, before age six. Um, uh, and uh, if you're overweight to, to begin with, then he is more restricted in what he recommends. And uh, so, it's interesting that, remember, he was quite overweight at, in high school. Now he weighs, he's six feet and weighs 175 pounds. But, but in high school, you know, he was, he was um, uh, highly overweight. And he remembers looking in the mirror and sees himself in the mirror. But even as an adult now, uh, being this handsome guy who could be a movie star, that uh, picture in there, uh, uh, that he still sees the kid in the mirror. So it has psychological effects. A lot of people, uh, girls especially, who are overweight get bulimia. They, they'll, they'll eat their meal and then go to the bathroom and vomit it all out. Mm -hmm. That's common, common. 
uh, in girls, especially starting around age uh, nine. So it has psychological effects um, and more than just the appearance that he sees in the mirror. It, some even commit suicide. But I have good news. This can be changed quickly. Go to 16.8, I recommend. Eat good fats, 20 cent protein, less of vegetables uh, uh, and fruit. And you'll be fine three, four weeks. The weight will just fall off of you. I've had it happen to many, many patients. And uh, so, uh, but images are important. Who am I, okay? And uh, so, uh, uh, increasing weight, loss of self-esteem, losing weight, tremendous gain in self-esteem. And, uh, uh, but girls' and boys' perceptions uh, are, uh, are different. And uh, so we have to keep this in mind. Uh, and, and around puberty, females uh, get much more conscious about how, how they look. And they're much more likely to go into risky behavior like drugs and alcohol. That peaks at age nine or so and then, then decreases. Uh, but males are more self-confident. Uh, they, they're not quite as reactive to the weight they're, uh, they're gaining. They may not even be, uh, be aware of it. Uh, uh, but uh, one out of five girls age nine or so have bulimia. They, purge, they, they eat what they want to eat. And they, go to the bathroom and vomit the whole thing out. I had a family member do that, and I'm uh, fully aware of uh, seeing that. So uh, like father, like son, if the parents are eating properly, as uh, the kid is. Uh, uh, but so the parents have a lot of influence. So what you guys are eating, the kids probably are eating because you're, you're, you're paying for it. You go to the restaurant, you're eating the similar food. Uh, so, but, but, if, if you're adopted to another family, odds are uh, you will be the size, 65% chance you'll be the size of the parents that adopted you. So genes isn't everything. It's, it's visual and what's on the table. Very important. So uh, I already told you the story of milk, uh, but sugar is, is a booger in the, in the hooker. Uh, I wrote, a, I wrote a, uh, a book here, I'm going to refer to a little bit here too. Um, it, it's a bit brutal, no doubt about it, but I'm going to refer to it a little bit here because it has in it the truth. And I think I, I read through again for the show, it's the truth and it has the, the remedy, okay? A little bit of a brutal name, but it, it's correct. Harming and killing our children. This, this is what we're doing today. Here's the book. It's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. I encourage you to read it because the last half of the book, I took my 20 prescriptions that lead to good life, a behavioral code uh, that maybe the schools could adopt, which they refused uh, in town here. Wendy Robinson uh, turned it down. She's retired now, uh, but we're having uh, violence in, in the schools. A gun was brought in uh, uh, recently. Behavioral issues. Uh, my 20 prescriptions really cover that very well. They're posted around town in front of the criminal justice building. The Boys and Girls Center has it on the wall. Uh, and and uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not interfering with anyone's religion. I'm trying to Im Im improve. Uh, these 20 things really cover the field very well. But I have one chapter in here. Uh, called the sugar kiss. <laughs> yes. Let me read to you a little bit. So, uh, high fructose corn syrup, which we talked a little bit, and and the reason they use the Latin food is a good for for industry. It's a good preservative. It, it, it food doesn't rot if it's got fructose corn syrup in it. Also, it's made from corn, and the government is paying every year money to industry to grow the corn from which they make fructose corn syrup. Yes, the government is causing the nation to be sick. It is through lobbying money and industry. This is being done. Our senators and our representatives are responsible for our bad health. The people don't know. They don't know what to eat. But let me read it to you a little bit. High fructose corn syrup, the, it's the ultimate Franken food. Okay, 
is added in high amounts to essentially all processed food. Processed food means you take off the germ and the cover, so you ate the, the pure uh, carbohydrate uh, uh, content. It is sweeter than regular sugar, less expensive than regular sugar, but con congressmen uh, uh, paying the industry uh, money, and keeps the food from rotting. I already mentioned that to you. The government supports the price through federal subsidies for corn, and it happens to be highly addictive. Sugar is addictive. I debated it once on one of these shows, and I lost the debate. <laughs> it is, it, yes, sugar is more addictive than cocaine because it goes straight up uh, to a very small area of the brain um, uh, that makes a hormone. I'm in heaven. I feel wonderful. It works all the time for any of us. And that's why people are drinking so many Cokes and eating sugary, uh, sugary foods, okay? High fructose corn syrup is hidden in pizza crust, tomato sauce, yeah. Maybe that's why I like the, fi the firecracker shrimp so much last night for dinner at a, at a restaurant. But weighing 133 pounds today, Maybe it's uh, the other good foods I was eating seem to affect me a lot. Um, uh, but uh, uh, ketchup, tomato sauce, salad dressings, it's even, uh, it's even in hamburgers. Yeah. Uh, of course, the food industry uses high food corn syrup because it costs less. The profits are bigger and it's more addictive because it's a lot sweeter. <laughs> yeah, so I want you to understand that. Food companies have done a lot of testing to determine the perfect breast point. Yeah, the, 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 there's a place in, in the uh, East uh, where they test foods in great detail, and they find out that children uh, can tolerate higher levels of sugar in their food, right up to 39%. Mm -hmm. Adults, maybe it's down to 20%. So they make foods for children a lot more sugary. They become addicted to it. They're more likely to tell their parents to buy it. Uh, and you have to be aware of that. They tolerate high sugar content simply more. The fructose, which is 55% uh, of fructose corn syrup, is highly soluble and it does not crystallize. That's the reason so you remain effective in processed foods forever. And that causes the food to harden or rot it. Or to rot. Yeah, so that's why uh, they put it in food so it, it stays around for three or four years. And uh, th this is interesting. There's also an accompanying increase in the rates of cancer for our children, for people who regularly eat fast food and processed food. Children consume equivalent of a hundred teaspoonfuls of sugar a day or more, and it causes obesity and all these diseases. And then the government makes it worse. You know, I can read food labels or not, uh, and, and uh, you don't even have to put uh, a, a, on the label that's got fructose in it, and it, and it yes. And then you have things labeled one sugar after another. And it isn't that the top one that's the most sugar in that food product. No, what's most in the, fru in the food product, you could have as number seven. Yeah, uh, and, and we assume that if they get listed like that, the worst one's on top. Uh, 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 the, 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 the best uh, sugar's on top and the worst one on the bottom. No, it can be anywhere along the line. So label reading, Unless it says 100% whole nut sugar, let's say 100%, that is a legal term. But the rest of the time, they're just uh, painting your mind and you're eating uh, sugary uh, foods. And uh, for over 55 years, the soft drink industry and the sugar industry have provided millions of dollars of funding to academic and government researchers to influence and cover up the health risks associated with consuming sugar. Have I hit this subject enough? Is it very clear to you? So uh, label reading is very difficult. Uh, uh, 
and, and and you may interpret because I have people tell me, what they, oh, they're so healthy, look at this label. Well, they don't know how to read labels. I had to learn it, and I'm still learning and still don't really uh, know enough about it. Uh, let me also tell you something uh, which, because you hear a lot about today, is, is a ketogenic diet. Is it good for, for children? And in a way, is a complex issue. But, but let me, there's good news that the proper studies have really not um, uh, been done, but some have been done. Duke University is sort of the center uh, of it because, uh, for one thing, uh, years ago, uh, uh, and, and I'm going to read to you a little bit from that because it's so important. Uh, James Sidbury, we need to take a hat off to him, worked at Duke in 1975. It has been clear that low carbohydrate, remember, remember we left the high, the, the low fat, uh, now we're low carb, high fat, good fats, okay? Ketogenic eating works as well for children with obesity as it does for adults. Mm -hmm. But it, it is not in books. It's not, uh, uh, Fred doesn't even bring it up. Dr. Fred doesn't really uh, uh, bring it up. But, but uh, for example, I, I know of a seriously overweight child I saw recently, and I told the mother, let's be open-minded. We don't know. Maybe go to Duke University uh, where they run big, uh, clinics, they, f they found it at first that instead of t there was no epilepsy drugs available, and they found following this diet uh, cut out 60, 70 percent of seizures. So, and so uh, it, it was good for that. But now, uh, but the children can lose weight without hunger and eat to satiety. Duke University has come up with that. So at least. Be open-minded about it, okay? I didn't say to do it. It's on page 246. Uh, this last thing I said is on page 250 uh, uh, in Gary Taub's book. Uh, uh, read it yourself. Uh, read the whole book because it's for, for adults. But it could even be applied if you're desperate and have a child, you just, just don't know what to do. Uh, have a look at this. And if you combine this with 16.8, the fasting, I get a feeling it could make a difference uh, in, uh, in, in your child. So in the summary, I just tried to introduce you to the subject of feeding your children. I gave you references, uh, uh, these three different books, to gather a lot more information. If you, if you read those, uh, you, you would know more uh, than anybody you run across and you would clearly know more than your doctor because he's not been taught this in medical school. I went there with these books, wanted them to read them, and then I give a lecture to the students. Uh, I was turned about, I was turned down for that. And, uh, and uh, so, I mean, that's the way the world is. Industry has great influence in the hospitals, the medical schools, public health, Yes, even public health are not teaching this. So, but thanks for listening. This will be on YouTube uh, within a week or two, so you can listen to it again. I have on YouTube also uh, probably 500 other shows on health of many different subjects, uh, many on, on diabetes, uh, stopping, preventing, reversing. Uh, but. Uh, I would highly recommend uh, that we teach our children, uh, uh, just like we teach them to walk, that we teach them to eat the correct and proper food habits uh, and, and not let the society around us uh, try to teach it to them in, instead. Remember even what it says in the Bible, uh, if you do this, habits repeatedly, as you will definitely be doing this as an adult. So we did this today because we care about you, we love you, uh, and I want you to gather some more information. If you see me, give me a hug, and I'll tell you where you can gather more information, or just say thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> we love you.